Hello, welcome to day five of the group devotion challenge. Um, let me know that you're here. Hey, Natty. Hey, Nav. Hey, Healing Light. Hey, Nancy. Let me know what corner of the world you are tuning in from. Hey, Gerald. Oh, Gerald does the best face massages in the whole world out of London. Check him out. Great to see you guys. Let me know how you are with a little emoji or a thumbs up or. Mm. Saudi Arabia, amazing. Hi, Donna May. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hey, Bay from Holland. Hey, Lauren. Okay, so yeah we are doing hey Catherine we are doing 21 days of group practice um what this essentially means is for 21 days we're just committing to well I am anyway committing to showing up and doing some kind of spiritual practice um the reason we're doing this I mean I am a big believer in carving out time to um, build the relationship with what I call your soul. It's really your inner life, your inner world, your spirit, your heart. Um, I have learned firsthand on the benefits of carving out a little bit of time. It could be through meditation, yoga, walking in nature. There's so many different types, prayer. So I'm going to be taking requests on the type of spiritual practice that you'd like to do over the next 21 days. This is day five. What we're going to be doing today is a written exercise. So if you, you can either write it in the comments or um, anywhere really, or if you happen to have a journal or a notebook or just a piece of paper, you might want to grab one now. <clears throat> And I'll be taking you through a quite quick soul inquiry process. So you might want to join me there. Um, the reason I've, I started this on ch last Tuesday quite spontaneously, just because everything that's happening around the world, I wanted to, in a small way, be able to provide some space for us to feel a little bit more centered and grounded um, I do really believe that the more centered and grounded we are, the more centered and grounded those around us are as well. I know some people um, on here are also holding space in your own community, and we all are in some capacity or other. It might be your family. It might be family by distance on WhatsApp. It's so easy to get spiraled out of control with the 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 news cycle, which is just so shocking. If you're if you're glued to it, um, I am a believer in staying informed, um, but it does come to a point where where we need to um, cut off and tune back in, and so that is what I'm committed to doing. Um, saying your Beautiful comments. Diana says, I just joined the Rise Sister Rise membership. I'm so excited. Everyone needs to join. <laughs> oh, well, I think um, I think it was meant to close. I think the link might still be up, though. So it's Re rebeccacampbell.me forward slash membership if you'd like to join. Like if, if you enjoy any of these practices that I'm taking you through, you're going to love that because it's all about like the whole point of it is spending time with your soul and connecting with like-minded people so if you would like to join you're welcome to um so okay so grab a pen and paper if you can um i'm going to lead us through opening soul space this is a ritualistic way that um it's a tool that i work with um at all of my workshops and events it also um is a um, something that I do um, in my mind's eye before I, I go on stage. If I'm somewhere like physically teaching a workshop and I can't physically do it, um, you can imagine doing it. Um, and it's also something that I do, um, say, before I go into a session, sometimes before I write, any time that I want to step into the space of the soul. The ancient Greeks spoke of there being two different types of time, kairos time and chronos time. Chronos time is chronological time. This is the time that we 
tend to all live in generally day to day when we're we're trying to catch a bus on time, when we're trying to arrive at an appointment on time. That's Kronos time. We need that in, in our world. Kairos time, however, is soul time. It's time outside of time. It is the place where things just line up and happen. It's the space where all healing happens. It's the space where creative ideas land fully formed. I believe that this period that we're in right now where we are experiencing something for the first time all as one together which is, at least in my lifetime, I've never experienced something like that, a global event where we're all in it together, literally. And at this other side of the spectrum, it's we live on a planet of polarity and we are going through this thing together and we're being called to retreat. Um, many of us isolate, separate ourselves. And so we're really working with this syllabus of the separation between people all of the things that we've taken for granted as well. And, you know, I've been contemplating quite a lot around like what what is this experience that we're going through? And 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 of course there's the 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 absolute horribleness of the situation. And there's also the the what we're experiencing on an inner level as well, um, all the fears surfacing, etc. Um but there's no two questions about it that we are being called to step back and and listen and stop. Many of us are being called to stop. And so in some ways, that is a form of stepping into a similar space as the soul. So join me with me now. Um, if you can, you can close your eyes for this. If not, keep them open. Um, we'll need to have our eyes open for the journal exercise. So you've got your pen and paper in front of you. Um, place your hands on your heart right now. Take a deep breath in and breathe out. Just checking where your energy's at. Are you leaning forward? Are you back? Bring yourself to center. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Bringing your hands to prayer. We're connecting into that ancient part of us, the part of us that is always calling us, the part of us that is always whispering to us. And this is the wise part of us. And so inviting that part of you to step forward now, bringing your hands up to just above your head, open down and around to prayer. And now opening the group energy, many different mystic traditions talk about the power of two or more of us coming together. When we, when we gather physically, whether it's a football stadium, a, stadium, a, a music venue, all these things that we're not able to do right now, we can feel the group energy. When we pray together, when we sing together, when we chant together, when we cheer together, and so in a moment, we're going to tap into that group energy and recognize that even though we are doing this virtually, we are all gathering together. So tapping into that now, activating the group energy, bringing your hands up to just above your head, open down and around, hands on heart, the center of your heart, imagine a beautiful flower. With your next breath, invite that flower to open petal by petal, revealing a light in the center. This is your soul, your spirit, your ancient self, the part of you that is inextinguishable, the part of you that exists beyond just this life. This is the voice of your intuition. And with your next breath, imagine that light getting bigger and bigger so it takes up your entire chest region. And really inviting this part of you to step forward now. And now letting this light grow bigger and bigger so it takes up your entire torso. With your next breath, let it grow bigger and bigger so it takes up your entire body head to toes, all around you. 
bigger and bigger so it takes up the entire room. Bigger and bigger so it takes up the entire house or wherever you are. Bigger and bigger so it takes up your entire street. Bigger and bigger so it takes up your entire suburb. Bigger and bigger so it takes up your entire city. Recognizing that the, there are many joined in this practice right now who are also in your city, imagining, feeling their presence too. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Now beginning to open your eyes, grabbing your pen and paper if you have it. And if not, you can just tune in and listen. But if you can, it is always good to physicalize. My teachers taught me that intuition is pointless unless you act on it, unless you, unless you turn it from being in the ethers into the 3D world. So we're really working with the two different dimensions here with intuition. So moving it from out here in thought, in feeling, into something physical through the written word. I'm going to give you a soul inquiry prompt in a sec. All this really is, is an open question. And I'll get you to, once I've said the question, write numbers one to 10 underneath. And then you're going to answer it intuitively. Now, when we, when we do soul inquiry, this is not about getting it right. You literally cannot get it wrong. It does not need to make sense. It's about letting the flow of thoughts come out, the flow of feelings come out. Um, and you may end up getting one thing out of those tens that really feels really um, real and true, or maybe all of them will. So just be willing to be surprised with whatever comes through for your soul inquiry, okay? So at the top of the page, I want you to write, my soul is yearning for, and if you don't have a, um, a pen and paper, you're welcome to use the comments for this. So at the top, write, my soul is yearning for, and then I'm gonna do it with you, so, this is me. It's going to be back the front, I think, on Instagram, but I've got my soul is yearning for. And then I'm going to write numbers 1 to 10. So I've written numbers 1 to 10 down here. Okay? So I'm going to fill it out with you. My soul is yearning for and together we're going to fill it out now. So my soul is yearning for. My soul is yearning for one to 10 and either writing it down in your notebook or writing it in the comments. Okay, and then when you're done, let me know if you're done. Have you done your 10 or do you need a little bit more time? And if you can, in the comments, maybe scanning, scanning your list. Oh, I can see you're done. Okay, great. So I think that's enough time. So we're going to move to the second page now. And it's the same type of exercise, but up the top, you're going to write, 
my soul is calling me to and then you're going to write one to ten underneath Just like this, if you've just joined, my soul is calling me to 1 to 10. I'm going to fill it in as well now too. Don't overthink it. Just quickly write whatever comes. My soul is calling me to Okay, so finishing your one to 10, my soul is calling me to, and let me know when you're done. Give me a thumbs up or a... Hi to everyone joining. We are doing a soul inquiry prompts. The two questions are, my soul is yearning for and my soul is calling me to. Okay, I can see a lot of you are done. Brilliant. So now what I want you to do is I want you to just very gently without thinking about it too much, just scan your list of my soul is yearning for and I want you to circle the one that stands out the most. So I'm going to do this. And then you're going to do the same thing for the second question. My soul is calling me to, and I just want you to circle the one that jumps out the most. Okay, and then in the comments, I want you to write down one of the soul inquiries that came out the most. So, it, first of all, with the question, the soul inquiry prompt of my soul is yearning for, write down in the comments one of the things that your soul is yearning for. And if you've just joined us, you can just do it live now with us. What is your soul most yearning for? So Corinne says companionship, we've got trust, deep knowing, laughter, calmness, expression from the heart, laughter, connection, romance, love, peace, health, family, loving myself, freedom, guidance, calm, Springtime in Canada, gardening flowers, harmony, balance, connection, enjoying life, amazing, structure, peace, calmness, surrender. Okay, so with that, that one thing that your soul's yearning for, I want you to write in the comments one baby step that you can take to make that happen this week. So it can be just like one little action that you can take in that direction. Just one thing. So for me, my biggest one was 
creating without an outcome. So my baby step would be um, to write a prayer that I need most, not because I want to do anything with it, just to write what is in my heart, spend five minutes to do that, for example. So Rebecca says, watch more funny stuff online. Nettie says, meditation and prayer. Got purge, cleaning, organizing, daily self-care, FaceTime with a girlfriend. I love you too, Heather. Um, exercising, being present in the moment, be less shy, creating time for yoga. Good one. Um, meditate, reach out to friends, incredible. Reading, good one. Okay, so then for the second question, my soul is calling me to. Now, you may have gotten very similar things for this soul inquiry prompt, which is great. Repetition is always good. Or you may have gotten new things come in. So I want you to scan your list of what your soul is calling you to do and circle one of those things that jumped out the most. So for me, my one thing that stood out the most, yeah, it was working with a friend of mine. Um, and so then my baby step in that direction is going to be hmm, meditating and journaling on the best way for that to happen. So let me know what yours is. What is the one thing that your soul's calling you to do the most and what is a baby step that you can take in that direction? You've got stay healthy, dance, trust and surrender, spread joy and ease, share my story, baby step is journaling. Good one. That's amazing, Julia. So what is your soul calling you to do and what is the baby step? Daily Reiki for others, baby step journaling. I feel called to do a podcast, so I've been writing ideas, recording myself, monologue to practice. Brilliant. Walks in nature, helping others. Wills, expressing myself through dance and sound. Incredible. So the baby step um, always seems like it's the thing that most people skip over. But in all of my years working with people, it is the most powerful thing. I know this from my own experience. I was very lucky to have teachers who really pushed me to physically do things in a direction. So... Pearson says, listen with my heart, not sure what a baby step is. Yeah, meditation could be one. It could be, um, you know, what I'm doing now, what I like doing when I need to step into my heart is I drink rose rose tea. I don't know if you can see this. It's kind of lost the rose color, but they're little baby rose leaves. Great way to get into the heart. It can be that simple. It's just one little step in that direction. And the idea is once you make one step, then you make another, and then you make another, then you make another. The thing about living a solid life, living a guided life, and by the way, my idea of living a solid life is really living a life that is in alignment, in flow, right? We get out of our heads where we're trying to analyze every step of the way before we take the first step right? So many people are wanting to know the, have the, the map. They want to have the instruction manual for the end destination with every single step along the way before they take the first step. So they may realize that, oh my gosh, I hate my job. I cannot handle this work anymore, but they can't work out how they're going to, um, 
end up like they don't even know what 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 other work they do the idea then is to focus on what lights you up what's the next step what's the next step what's the next step and before you know it once you follow those little baby steps every single day and it might just start with rose tea and then it might start with with um um journaling in rose tea and then the journaling might download some ideas and then that might turn into going to to a cafe when we're not in lockdown around the corner where you meet someone while you're journaling who you connect with and then they give you an idea when you surrender to the little baby steps of your intuition like turning your intuition into action what happens is we find ourselves then getting into the flow right i really believe that our our intuition is hooked in with the mysterious force of the universe, right? The same uh, rhythmic pulse that causes the tides to come and go, the seasons to come and go, exist within us too. Um, but we've spent too much time in chron chronos time, like I was saying earlier, the ancient Greeks spoke about chronos time and kairos time. Chronos time is chronological time. It's the time of the mind. It's very linear. Kairos time is the time of the heart, is the time of the soul. So this work we're doing here is really all about Kairos time. But then we want to turn it into action. And so that's where the baby step comes in. So brilliant. Okay, so, you know, this is just such a simple tool. I'm sure many of you have used journaling before. Um, what you all you really need for it and you can you can do an open-ended version of soul inquiry so instead of answering one to ten you can just literally do say two to three pages of journaling continuous writing um, and you will end up getting intuitive downloads as you do it it is a really great way it's a great tool if you're finding that you're going round and round and round in your head there's so many thoughts in your head so the continuous journaling is incredible for that because it's like you're emptying out all of the thoughts that you're 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 walking around with day to day so i hope that that served you um i hope that you are um you are having an incredible day um regardless of of the craziness that we are living in right now um i'm just seeing all of your amazing comments um, so charlotte says is there something significant about the type of flower we envisaged over our hearts yeah potentially um you don't have to overthink it but i i i personally this is my personal belief and i've actually got a soul journey about this which is called discover your soul flower which um it might actually be if you go on to my website you might be able to find it there i'm not sure if it's available there but it's definitely in my membership um so you find that rebeccacamp.me forward slash membership but it is uh, in my opinion the um the we each have like our our soul we've been crafting our souls for lifetimes and the soul has often been described as a multifaceted crystal. The soul resides in the heart. And in my experience, I see souls as being represented by flowers. It's a, it's a, it's a visualization of the uniqueness of all of us. And I do believe that just like, just as there are so many different unique um, souls out there and individuals, there is also so many amazing flowers. And I do believe that there is a particular flower for each of us that represents who we are as a soul. And working with that flower, whether it's through um, actually having it around us or um, having um, a print or an artwork of it um, can really help us uh, rest back into and embrace who we really are at soul level. So my um, my flower is the like a soft pink peony, but peonies aren't available all year round. So I've got, I use a soft pink rose here so you can see it. So I tend to have one of these if I can at my desk as I'm writing as much as I can. So 
you can you can i've got like whole workbooks around like working with flower i put flowers i call it flower work you can journal with flowers as well um i really believe particularly roses there is so much ancient wisdom around um the rose and mysteries around the roses um and yeah i i think that that there's many different quotes around like if you want to understand the mystery of the universe look at a flower look at a rose so it is a version of spiritual practice just flower work in itself um but yeah so notice the 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 flower that appeared uh for some people they see the same flower over and over again for others they may find that they um, see different flowers in different stages of their life my understanding of that is that whatever we see is what is is rising most in us so trust that um, pay attention to whatever comes so lisa says what's the significance of the of the sunflower well that's an amazing question i'll tell you what i feel but then i'd, I'd like you to tell me what it is for you um, but for me the sunflower is human sunshine it is it is strong it is rooted it is grounded and it's just just lights up everyone's lives so that's what it means to me the the like if you compare a rose to a sunflower the sunflower is strong and here it's got a real strong presence um so lisa says yes same absolutely um uh navigating holistic says what's your view of an of an orchid an orchid is is very royal i think it is very it's kind of like i am here it is extremely unique um my my friend Binny, her flower is an orchid and it's just so her she is a queen <laughs> so that's my my view of an orchid it's very um I'd say like royal and um, crowned. Um, so we've got a rose's love. Well, they don't have to just be love. I know the red rose is associated with with love. I think roses are healing. I think roses hold uh, ancient wisdom. I think that they hold the um, the mysteries of. Um, the secret mysteries. There is, there is, there is a lot about the rose. I'm actually doing a one of my new projects that I've um, just committed to is on the mysteries of the rose. So I can't wait to get started on that and share it with you guys. Um, but oh, I love how um, how interested you guys are in the flowers. Um, so i'm just looking at the comments sorry um do you think it's possible to have particular flowers that you're drawn to that could be your soul flower absolutely and here's the thing um when it comes to all of this um whatever you see is the truth forget what everyone else says you know more than anyone so whatever is the flower that came for you so lara says frangipani oh so gorgeous reminds me of Growing up in Australia, I can smell that sweet scent. Ah, oh, Stepanka says, would love to learn more about flowers. Yeah, me too. I will continue to share. Um, what's your opinion on black flowers? Incredible. Absolutely. Is that what you got, Julia? I haven't seen a lot of black flowers, but wow. Um Lisa says, I've been making time to read Ladies and New Black this week and love it. Amazing. This time I had a red poppy, but I switch between flowers a lot. Great. Um, Secrets of a Butterfly, beautiful Catherine says, uh, search flower essences and it can give you more ideas on their gifts. Great idea. Yeah, if anyone's got any, any favorite books around flowers, um, around flower essences, pop it in the comments and we can all do some research and dive a little bit deeper in it. Reiki, my day says tulip for me. 
Rebecca says, I must re-listen to this as I've missed the flower segment of your live. <laughs> well, the whole thing wasn't about flowers. It was just the beginning when we opened the meditation, I led us all to connect in with the your soul flower at the center of your heart. So you can do this yourself by, you know, just now even, you can just tune in to the center of your heart and imagine a beautiful flower there, just noticing the color, the texture, the type of flower. And then with your breath, opening it petal by petal. Tuning into this part of you, asking it, what message does it have for you today? And just listening. What quality is it calling you to step into a little bit more? And then opening your eyes. Okay, well, I look forward to coming back and um yeah, as Asa says, the Discover Your Soul Flower med, uh, meditation is on my website. So you can find that there if you want to. It's like a, I think it's like a 20 to 30 minute uh, soul journey. So if you want to dive more into your soul flower, you can totally do that there. All right, um, we're going to close the sacred soul space now. Um, but before we do, thank you so much for connecting with me, with all of us during this time. Um, I love you all very much. Let's bring our hands to heart. And in reverse, we bring our hands down, up, and around. And then doing it together, closing the individual soul space as well. Deep breath in, deep breath out. All right, have a wonderful day and I hope to see you again tomorrow.